So what's new in Warframe this week? Well, for the Archon Hunt, it will be Archon Amur for a Crimson Archon Shard, meaning Bird 3 should be selling an Amber Archon Shard. We will have to fact check this one since they did move it. It will be an Extermination Mission, then an Interception Mission, then Take on Amur for that Crimson Archon Shard, and of course the chance to actually get a hold of the Tau Forged Archon Shard, which I'm just now noticing isn't actually listed as a possible reward. No Tau Forged. You do have a chance of getting a Tau Forged, I'm just amazed it's not listed in the possible rewards. Actually, guaranteed reward is just a Crimson Archon Shard. You just have a chance of it being Tau Forged. Anyway, for normal Daviri circuit, for a chance to get a hold of the parts to build a frame, it is Hydroid, Mirage or Limbo. On the Steel Path Daviri circuit for the Incarn and Genesis devices, it is the Bow, the Latron, the Furus, the Furax, or the Strun. Of course, if you have all of these, you can, of course, go for a Rifle Riven mod, a Pistol Riven mod, or a Melee Riven mod, or you can always just go for the 20,000 Kuva and a Riven mod, or an Incarn and device. Nightwave Elite Acts are, of course, kill a Tusk Thumper Doma in the Plains of Eidolon. Just start the the hardest bounty that's actually there. And instead of doing the bounty, just run around and find the Doma. Pretty much easy enough to do. And survive over 20 minutes in Kuva Survival. I wish that was 30. Or, it does say Elite, how about on Steel Path? Or, 60 minutes. 60 minutes would be a little bit overkill though. Normal acts, mine three rare gems in the Orb Valis, and play three different, ugh, play three different songs with a guitar in Daviri. Ooh, that's a weird one. And of course there is the normal ones of Kill 30 Xmas, 15 missions, 500 enemies, cred offerings, there is the usual, with I have been asked a few times to go through every single helmet, but this would be a much, much longer video. I mean, do I really need this to come every single week? Yes, that frame was given for free in the first two weeks it was out, but still. Aura-wise, there is pretty much all of them, but not the better ones. Energy Siphon of course being the better one and it's not here. There is Steel Charge, 60% extra melee damage, always worth getting a hold of, is great for levelling frames, especially if they are melee based. Corrosive Projection, minus 18% armour to enemies. Loot Detector, 30% loot detector radar, sorry, plus 30, that is the range of it. Rifle Amp, 27% extra rifle damage. Enemy Radar, Sabres, Loot Radar, Animal Instinct will replace both of these and goes on to a Sentinel or Companion of some kind, which obviously makes these two completely obsolete. Though, it does still increase the Loot Radar or Enemy Radar if you have that Aura in and Animal Instinct. There is Sprint Boost, 15% Sprint Speed. Don't know why it's not just basic movement speed, but never mind. And... For the Convectress, efficient beams. Only consume ammo when dealing damage, meaning you can just shoot it randomly and it won't deal damage. If you're missing that much, you need to put that in. Hmm, 150% status chance can also be very, very useful. If you think you're going to miss and you are using that, purposely miss. Best idea with that. The Jewel Zoran Dagarak skin blueprint is here. The Heck Desert Camo skin blueprint is here. The Karak Desert Camo skin blueprint is also here, as is the Sindo Dagarak skin. But it's kind of behind the frame. So there it is. Now you can actually see the head of the axe you put it on. There is the Saturn 6 scene. This allows you in Capturer to basically run around there and have a look whatever you want to. The Saturn 6 emblem, emblem of course being the one that goes on your arm. The Emissary emblem, again, goes on your arm. There is the Dark Dagger blueprint. This would be for the actual Dark Dagger melee weapon. It is pretty decent, but at this point it is still mastery fodder. The Nightwave landing craft decoration, it says ornament, but it's still just a landing craft decoration, as is the Glassmaker ornament. There is the 
plasma sword blueprint. I would still rather take that. And I would still one day love to see them do a dual wielding version of this. That would be great. Augment wise, Embar's Fire Blast, Volt's Electronic Shield. Actually, it's just Electric Shield. A Mirage's Prism Augment. Teshin Steel Path on our store this week will have the 50,000 Kuva. That is a great way to get Kuva. Shame you can only kind of purchase it once. 15 Steel Essence for 10,000 Kuva. Or 55 Steel Essence for 50,000. That is much cheaper if you do buy your Kuva using Steel Essence. The Deep Orc Media missions this week will be Alchemy, followed by Mirror Defense, followed by Assassination. Love these things because level 250 to 275 makes it... I'm not going to use the word challenging, I'm going to use the word fun because it's fun not just to be able to one-shot everything. And the rewards for this can be very interesting. Even if Tau Forged Archon Shards is actually listed there. Hence the confusion from earlier with uh, the Archon Hunt. Kind of thought that listed Tau Forged. And lastly, don't forget if you want the Rhino Deck Skin or the Excalibur Dex Noggle. These alerts are available until April 12th at 10.59am. ET, as well as the Steel Path Alert is still there for the Exilus Weapon Adapter. These will of course swap over April 12th, this Friday at 11am ET, and it will be a alert for the Dex Furus. Worth getting a hold of because this weapon is only available for one week out of the entire year. If you miss it, you will have to wait until next year to get a hold of it, and there's also a Double credit weekend, this weekend, starting at 11am on April 12th, on Friday, and ending on April the 15th at 10.59am. I don't know why that doesn't just say 11am, but hey, semantics. And with that, we'll leave this off here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.